I'm Trudy McKay. I'm in the Department of Genetics and Entomology, and I'm a quantitative geneticist. Um, quantitative genetics are uh, the kinds of traits that, that underlie subtle differences in morphology, behavior, physiology, susceptibility to disease. These are the traits that produce the great diversity in um, companion animals, diversity um, that is capitalized on by animal breeders to improve food and fiber, and plant breeders likewise. Perhaps less obvious uh, is the role of quantitative variation in adapt adaptation to environmental change, including human-induced environmental change and climate change. Quantitative traits also underlie the great diversity in human populations and differences in susceptibility to disease. Until fairly recently, this has been a statistical science where we describe, we can only describe and make very coarse grained predictions about um, how individuals are related to each other and what the likelihood of a particular value of these traits are. The goal of my research is to look within that st uh, gray bell curve and describe quantitative variation in terms of knowledge of all of the contributing differences in genotypes and in genetic variants between individuals in a population and have a parts list. Know what are the actual genes or loci, um, what is the effect of each one on a whole spectrum of traits, um, are, the free, are, are these alleles rare, common, uh, are they in genes, outside genes? And how do they combine then to affect the trait? And we're not so simple-minded as to think that genes affect the traits directly. We know they do so through complicated molecular interactions. Molecular interactions in gene expression traits, molecular interactions in metabolites and proteins. And so the goal of um, our research is to figure out, using a tractable model organism, such as Drosophila molligaster, my favorite beast, um, take advantage of the great genetic resources available um, in, in this organism. We, we have mutations in practically every single gene in the species. We have the um, capability of making genetically identical individuals. We can select them, just like animal and plant breeders select animals their organisms, and we believe that this model organism, in addition to being a model insect, is also going to give us biological insights given evolutionary conservation of pathways from bacteria to yeast to humans. And the problem is you cannot solve the genotype-phenotype map without knowing all of the variations at the level of the genotype. So I have in the past led a large international collaboration in co um, with Baylor College of Medicine to fully sequence about 200 lines of fruit flies. Each of these lines is genetically identical within a line, but completely different from all the other lines. These were developed from flies caught at Raleigh's Farmer's Market and they are a living library of genetic variation. There are four million genetic variants in these 200 lines of flies. So what we can do is look at these flies, know what their genotypes are, and determine um, the relationships with these complex traits. And so you would be surprised at how many different complex traits one can measure on the flies, aspects of stress resistance, fitness, behaviors, and now that we have complete genotype information, variation for any quantitative trait you can, practically, you can ever imagine measuring, and variation for tens of thousands of gene expression traits, we can now put all of this information together to construct molecular genetic networks affecting the traits. And in this way, we can derive causal models that we can actually use to predict um, what value of these traits individuals will have. And I would like to just close by saying we're having amazing surprises. We're finding that genes that are only annotated, only 
predicted by a computer um, actually have very large effects on these traits. And we're finding indeed that regions in between genes that we thought had no function whatsoever were key um, players or hubs in these molecular networks. So this harkens back to Dr. Sharp's plenary address. Um, this is the future of the, the new biology and applications to evolution, medicine, and animal and plant breeding. Thank you.